The world's largest pack is happening right below all of our navel cavities, and it is happening right here in America. What is it? It is the epidemic of obesity and unhealthy McDonald's greasy food fried everything habits that us Americans love so much. How come in America we have normalized this mantra that McDonald's greasy cheeseburgers and fried everything is the only way that we can live our lives? I mean, it doesn't take anyone to realize if you looked at a picture of America in 2023 versus one in 1923, there would be some very distinct differences. The main one being people in 1923 were very healthy, fit, and in shape. And in 2023, well, look no further than social media's glorification of love who you are to realize that we are over glorifying unhealthy eating habits to the point of we are saying that obese, fat, overweight, unhealthy eating trends are the new normal. It is no secret that in 2023, a overweight, larger female is the pinnacle of perfection today. And look no further than Lizzo, whose entire personality is that she is the pinnacle, the peak of perfection, and that her overweight, oh, I'm sorry, her perfectly normal weight is absolutely healthy, and she doesn't need to do a single thing to change it. I just finished showering and doing my little routine, and you know what I realized? I am fucking gorgeous i am the beauty standard catch up bitch Newsflash to everyone out there, being overweight and obese should never have become the new normal for Americans today. Don't even get me started on all the health issues that are coming out of this. Do you guys really want to die of heart attacks and the fact that you're going to have diabetes because your body cannot process all the sugars, carbs, fats, and chemicals that you're putting in it? No, don't get me started on that. But let's talk about the fact that we as Americans have completely derailed from the we should be eating fruits and vegetables, caring about our weights, our muscles, our actual bodily figures. We are such a toxic culture today that if a woman decides that she wants to lose the extra weight that is unhealthy for her in the first place, the entire internet gets onto her and says that she is being fat phobic and she should just love herself. And there are Countless examples of this, like Rebel Wilson, who was known as Fat Amy from Pitch Perfect. What's your name? Fat Amy. Um, you call yourself Fat Amy? Yeah, so twig bitches like you don't do it behind my back. She decided she wanted to better her healthy lifestyle, and she lost the weight. Or look at Angelina Jolie, who was literally an anorexic actress, but was still bullied and absolutely ridiculed for being quote-unquote too fat. The hypocrisy is absolutely uncanny, but the point being is when a woman decides that they want to make their lifestyle healthier and lose the overweight mentality, the internet absolutely crucifies them for it. But I don't think... The internet is exactly to blame considering our society today, everything is either deep fried, covered in grease, completely unhealthy, or filled with so many toxic chemicals that I honestly can't pronounce any of them. But let's go back to where this all began, and we could honestly boil that back down to the USDA's 1992 food pyramid. And let's look at this. At the bottom of the pyramid, that's what you're supposed to eat the most of, you have all of your breads, your carbs, your rice, your cereals, your pastas, and it says that you're supposed to have 6 to 11 servings of that a day. Next on the food group, you have your fruits, your vegetables two to four servings a day. A little bit suspicious, but fine, we'll let it pass. A little bit less than the fruits and vegetables, that's where you have your dairies, your milks, your cheeses, as well as your produce like meats, your poultries, fish, eggs, only two to three. Then at the very top of the pyramid, where you're only supposed to have just a little bit of it, not too much, you have your fats, your oils, and your sugary candies and sweets. At first glance, this pyramid seems like it's just fine. But upon closer inspection, I have to ask the question of how come the fruits and the vegetables, the natural produce that is grown on this planet, how come that is in the middle? The meats and the produces that animals naturally occur, which is the proteins that we need, those are even higher up. And the one thing that you're supposed to have the most of are your carbs and your breads, which we obviously know today are usually what add a couple pounds in the front and the back. 
Fast forward over 31 years later, and let's look at our government-funded FDA food pyramid where they ranked Lucky Charms, the sugar-filled chemical gross cereal above ground beef, eggs, and the audacity of even milks, cheeses, and nuts. In what world are we dumb enough to believe, because of course the government, they would never lie to us, right? That a cereal that has Red 40, that has more chemicals than I can even pronounce, is in some crazy world better for your body than an all-natural, all-organic protein that is sustainably produced on this planet. Newsflash, it's not. What is one thing that the nuclear family and every household has? That would be bread. And everybody's favorite bread that my own father and brother are guilty of is Wonder Bread. But have you ever wondered what was inside this suspiciously white, light, fluffy bread? Well, I'll tell you. There's a single chemical called azocarbonamide, also formerly known as ADA, that is used in billions of different types of breads and cereals and all sorts of different wheat products. But oh, get this, this same chemical is used in yoga mats to adhere all the plastic molecules together. And what world does that belong in a food? Now you might be wondering if this is so bad, then how come it's not banned? Well, it is in European countries and in other countries like Australia, but in America, the FDA, our capitalist nation, we love to make money. And if we can make money off a quick buck and it be at the cost of your health, then they will definitely do it. Wrapping all of this up full circle, obesity has tripled in the past 60 years alone. And it might have to do with the fact that we are filling our body up with literal chemicals and garbage, yet expecting ourselves to stay healthy and in shape. So we've established that America, we like everything bright and sugary. And a jump over the pond, it's vastly different when it comes to health, nutrition, food, what's on the grocery shelves. But I would like to talk about the healthcare system in particular. I don't want to talk about whether or not it's good or bad over here versus over there. Quite frankly, I don't like any of y'all. I don't trust any of y'all. I would rather cure my ailments with natural herbs and remedies and not have to go to some creepy guy who has a degree from somewhere whom I don't know where it came from. Trust him, blah, blah, blah. You know what? It's a discussion for a different day. It is what it is. But let's talk about how in America we have a treatment-based healthcare system. You're sick, we're gonna prescribe you this. Versus over in Japan, for instance, they have preventative health care, where they don't want you to have the problem at all in the first place. Everybody knows the meme about how Asian people age until they're about 20 and then they just stop for forever. Americans, we sort of have the opposite. We're a little bit more robust, just a little bit wider, some bigger bones. But I do have something to say when it comes to the Japanese healthcare system. How come they have some of the lowest obesity in the entire world? Yet yeah, Americans, we are right up there around that top marker all the way up there. It might have to do with the way that we are treating our health and our bodies and what we're putting inside our bodies with our nutrition. The same thing goes for the infant mortality rate. Japanese are amongst the lowest in the world versus Americans, for some reason, we're at the highest. For being as advanced as we are and for being quote unquote the world's leading people when it comes to technology and scientific discoveries, how come we haven't figured this out yet? My theory in all of this is that the food that we ingest, the things that we put on our body actually do matter and actually will affect the way that we live a healthy, natural life. Why is it that in other countries they acknowledge this and try to change it, but in America we either just don't acknowledge it or at all, or we just completely ignore it even though we do know the truth? And when it comes to babies and the infant mortality rate, it might have to do with what the mother is putting in their body, that it does affect the baby when it comes to just health and nutrition in general, as well as all of the drac scenes that they're putting in their body. If what you ate didn't affect your baby, then alcohol fetal syndrome just wouldn't exist. Look no further than the ingredients list of, let's say, a household name like Kraft Mac and Cheese in America versus in Europe. America has a laundry list of things in it. What? I'm sorry. I, I was saying Kraft Mac and Cheese is so good, though. I don't disagree, but it's That's not good, good for you. Taste. Oh my god! Uh, it is. It's a unique 
wonder. <laughs> Let's look at an example of a craft mac and cheese ingredient list from America versus over in Europe. America, we have a laundry list of things, half of which I cannot pronounce nor do I know what it is. Versus in Europe, it's short, concise, and to the point. In America, we use yellow six, yellow five to make that bright orange color that everybody knows and loves. Versus in Europe, they color it with natural spices like cayennes and turmerics. And I have to say, if you had the choice between the two, I'm gonna go with the one that's not flavored with chemicals that don't exist naturally in nature. So should we do what our politicians do best and make about a bazillion more laws and pass legislation that probably nobody has read fully all the way through? Uh, I'm gonna go with no on that because we live in a free country here where you can do, say, and quite frankly, eat whatever the heck you want. Now I will say, why do we make it so difficult to produce things naturally and organically? Maybe we could, you know, take off a couple hundred regulations off of that while you guys were at it. But when it comes and just boils right down to it, the American people have a choice. You can choose the healthier, more natural lifestyle of eating things that, you know, are actually produced in nature versus the chemically created stuff in a lab that's brightly covered, filled with sugar, and is killing your colon. I'm gonna go with the healthy one, but this is a free country and y'all can do what you want, so knock yourselves out. Here's my suggestion to everybody out there. When we go into supermarkets today, let's read the ingredients labels, let's educate ourselves on what these 20 plus letter words actually do mean, and you know what? Let's use the biggest weapon that we have against these big corporations that truly don't care about you or your health. Let's vote with our wallet instead. Let's go and support the mom and pop shops in those farmers markets down the street where we know exactly when that produce was grown, where it was picked, and what's in it. And I I promise you, your health, your nutrition, and your body is going to thank you later. Or not. I don't care. It's a free country. Y'all do what you want. Anyway, don't forget to like, follow, subscribe down below, and comment what y'all's favorite chemical disgusting additive filled special treat is. Mine personally is Oreos until I guilt trip myself into not eating them anymore. Peace. It's lunchtime. I'm going to go make myself a healthy sandwich with a cookie.